I say be consistent on how you start, what configuration you have. I like to have my headset on and my door off. Then I always know what is the normal sound. I can be aware of anything that might be uh, abnormal during the start. So I've got somebody behind me. He's a helicopter pilot. He's with his helicopter, so I'm not concerned there. Feel my flow. Rotor brake is off. Fuel shutoff is off. AC is off. Both throttles are in ground. Tell us, Alex, calling 10 5 9 go through the crash and runway 17 midfield. Uh, these are all where I want them to be set. Once I get my generator on, I'll turn on the anti-collision light. Bleed air is off. I've got 26.1 on the volts. That is good. I've got one, two, three, four reds, a generator, and weight on gear. That's exactly how I like it. Okay. And timer comes on. There. And it looks like he's getting ready to start up, too. Perfect. Okay, listening, watching for the draw on the battery. It came down to 16, that's really good. Nice, strong, true blue battery. This thing has a dual FADEC. It's gonna abort a start if it's going bad in any way, and it'll actually try one more start with the uh, left of the amperage that it has, or voltage, I mean. That little tone is the generator showing that that's coming online. The starter is now out. We've got NR gets uh, to 62, 63. When it's stable at 64, I'll turn on the generator. Really good habit to note your amperage. It draws 40. This helicopter with this configuration always does. As soon as I turn on the AC, it'll be another 10 to 15. I'm green everywhere except for engine temperature. If it's above 10, I can go straight to fly, which it is. Get my door closed. Getting ready to start. I'm not. I'm actually going to leave my door open and wait till he's spooled up before I actually take off, uh, because my downwash will go towards him. And when his blades are not fully uh, spinning and centrifugal force pulling them out, they're the most vulnerable right now. So if he's starting slowly and the blades are slowly spinning up, and I go to take off, my wind could actually flap his blade down and come into contact with the tail cone with the tail cone. Ask me how I know. Yeah, I know. Happened to me in an R-22 when a Bell 407 was taking off next to me. And it was the Bell 407's fault. Because pilots are responsible for their own downwash and any damage that they cause. And he still has not started up, so I'm, st I'm just going to wait. But I am going to I want to roll it up, but I don't want him to think I'm going to take off and then wait to start. He does not have his headset on. All right. This engine likes to be at full fly. The engine is... Okay, I got somebody taking off there. Still waiting for green on that. I can do my... Uh, Anti-collision light comes on, that drew five. Turn on the pedo heat just to make sure it works. I've got the light and it draws five. Yep, got that guy on the go. Get rid of my timer. Got 270 pounds of fuel. Do hydraulic test, one, two, three, four, cross pattern. Okay, he's got his lights on. I'm guessing he's about to start. Yep. So right now he's in the most vulnerable position of his blades flapping. So I will just wait a moment. Never saw the plane go by. It probably did. I just missed it. There he is. Stellar traffic, Helicopter 5 Hotel Mike picking up at the southeast end. They'll be departing to the south. Get my AC going. That's all traffic down go, so we're gonna do a left down one departure. Okay. Get myself a map so I can see where everyone is. Get my hat out of the way so it sounds nice. Off we go. Yeah. Gonna pick up way tail low. 
Wow. I don't like that. Watch your tail. Okay. Have fun, Lee. Hey, thanks. Have fun out there. We'll see ya. Right. Got an airplane over there. Are you going to pick up the honey badger? I <laughs> sure am. Are you already down there? No, I'm just giving some rides. Oh, have fun. Super nice day for it.